We're visiting today with a famous mad dog, Andy Miller, KD6 TKX, in his world-class uh, military ham station, featuring this beautiful Collins TDO, which he was fortunate enough to uh, acquire, uh, rebuilt, freshly rebuilt. In, uh, in the crates. Tell us a story about that there. Uh, it was, uh, it's a 1944 transmitter that was rebuilt at Mare Island in 1954 and it was crated for overseas shipment and it never went anywhere. It was stockpiled by the Navy. And when I acquired it, it was still in the uh, pine slatted crates. It was nine crates, totaling about uh, a little over 2,000 pounds, all the uh, crates combined. So it was a backbreaker. But it was fun to open those uh, crates and find it in like new condition. Did you smell the aroma of 19? It was packed in about, each each component was packed in about six different layers. So it really, and the, the final layer was air sealed, uh, metallic impregnated canvas so it was uh, there was no air to smell because it was airtight mm -hmm. and did it come up without any problems absolutely nothing took one one afternoon after we got it in here uh, Tom WA6OPE came down since he has prior TDO uh, knowledge we put the uh, I could open it up if you're yeah. ready for that and it, the uh, assembly phase consisted simply of installing the uh, three separate decks, uh, the power supply, which is the main one on the bottom, was already in place, and uh, that was about it. It came up immediately without a single problem. It even came with a complete complement of brand new tubes, two of each. So everything was there. It was about the easiest radio I've ever had as far as putting it in. That was difficult to uh, acquire transportation-wise, but once it got here. And this is your remote control over here. Right. right. So you've got, how many channels are crystal controlled right now? Uh, it's a master oscillator transmitter, which oh, is, is this is the primary difference between the civilian 16F and the Navy's TDO is that the Navy uh, wanted master oscillators, so Collins accommodated them, and in the TDO it has the master oscillator. Well, then what's the point of having nine different channels to select? Well, obviously that you don't have to adjust each control for each frequency, plus you can. You could preset the uh, master oscillator along with all the other. To controls. different frequencies? Yeah. Oh. So so the auto tune also works on the master oscillator. Exactly. There is no provision for crystal control. And it's designed uh, primarily, f this, this, type, this radio is designed primarily for control tower applications. And yeah. This would have been in either a remote site or down in the basement or wherever the transmitters were uh, stored at the tower. And then the, the transfer can be completely controlled by this unit here up to mm -hmm. quite a good distance away. This is the RBC-1, which is from the 1941 contract date by RCA. It's a receiver that covers 4 to 27 megacycles. And uh, they're not real popular because of their bulk and the fact they have an external power supply. But I'm a big fan of them. I really enjoy them, especially for CW work. They're, they're very stable. This is, of course, the uh, venerable AR-88 that is uh, recently come to rest here, and I really like it. And this is an RBB, which is the same as the matching receiver with this, and this one covers from the broadcast band up to four. And again, uh, something I really enjoy. And of course, uh, no military station is complete without the Chelsea clock. Of course. You have to, you have to have it. And then this is a uh, 1944 General Electric Transmitter known as a TCM, Tango Charlie Mary which I acquired from, uh, I'm trying to remember the guy's name, older guy. Obviously a guy with good taste Older guy, yeah, the guy with the, his camera on his shoulder. But uh, this has been a fun transmitter. So as big as that is, how much power does it run? Uh, it runs 200 watts of CW, and then it's rated at 35 watts of, of grid modulated AM, but uh, in actuality it's about 65 watts on 75 meters. And it runs a pair of 803s in the final. Uh, the antenna system is well. You can see you can see the end of my antennas right here. <laughs> That's the end of the antenna, and uh, it's 140 feet approximately of wire. It's an in inverted L configuration, and as you can see, it's literally end fed and goes right into the transmitters. I don't think anyone does that anymore. I wonder why, but uh, it works quite well with these transmitters that were designed to run that way. And then this is his junk pile. In it, there's a BC-610, and uh, he's got a lifetime supply of uh, duplicate receivers, pan adapters. I mean, this is like a, uh, a repair depot here, right? <laughs> well, sometimes. Well, any closing words? 
Yeah, see you on 38.7.